And what sure. Are uh, Luke chapter 16, starting at verse 19. Mm -hmm. So you, you want to read three verses? What Let's what? do it this way here. We're just going to go down through. Start with the wife, we're going straight on down through. Uh, send that micro this way here. And each one reads three verses. I'm not going to interrupt. And then we're going to go back and we'll, we'll break them down. And we're going to 15, 17, 16, starting with verse 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. Bagger named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Now you're going to read 22, 23, and 24. 22, 23, 24. I lost it when I touched it. All right, I'll read that and she can read mine. So, um, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels <clears throat> excuse me, into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Okay, uh, so, so now let, let her pick up now and read the next three there. Twenty seven. Twenty five. Start with twenty-five. But but Abraham but Abraham said, Son, remember that in your life time you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is Comfort and comforted and but are tormented. 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 And bes beside all this between us and your uh, and you there is a great guilt. Golf. Oh, excuse me, a golf. Fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from these, from, from there. And beside all this, between us and you there is is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from the, from uh, here to you cannot, nor can those from these pass to us. Okay, uh, so Stephanie, pick up uh, three okay. verses. All right. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into the, this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophet, let them hear them. Sister Sue, last two. And he said, Nay, Father, Abraham, but if one <clears throat> went into them from the dead, 
they will repent. And he said unto, unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, <clears throat> neither will they be persuaded, though the one who, <coughs> I'm sorry, the one rose from the dead. Amen. Now, the question I want to ask is this. What did we read? What What is so important? <clears throat> Let's say it again. It's so bad that people will read scriptures and don't even understand what they're reading because they do not take time out to meditate on it and to study it. Now, every word is inspired of God. This is, who's speaking here? Jesus. Jesus. How many believe that every word he's saying is very important? Yeah. So it would take us for eternity to understand every word that he's saying. And he's telling a story, not a parable, not an example. He's telling a real life story of something that happened here. And yet we'll read it and say, well, this is basically what we'll say. Uh, Lazarus went to heaven, the, the rich man went to hell. That, that's basically, basically all we'll say about the story. But the story got so much more meaning to it. And if you preach that in churches, all the people's going to want to hear is, I went to heaven, I went to heaven, I went to heaven. I had a rough time on earth, I went to heaven. But there's a powerful story here that I believe Jesus is trying to scare the hell out of us. Yes. Somebody say amen. Can I say that again? I believe Jesus is trying to scare the hell out of us. Mm -hmm. Can I say that again? Yes. He's not telling a story here about a nice, comfortable place. He's basing, basing the whole story on a place called hell. Mm -hmm. He's not talking so much about heaven as much as he is about what? Hell. Lake of fire, brimstone, hell, torment. <coughs> so if he stresses so much about this place called hell, Lake of fire torment, he must be trying to get our attention about something. And if we read the story, we can find out that the man, the rich man who was in hell, was begging for mercy. He didn't want his brothers to come. He had five brothers. Well, if you just let one of them come from the dead, go back and talk to them, they'll be saved. How many of you know Jesus says, that don't cut it? If they won't hear Moses or anybody else, they ain't going to do no good. How many of you know? There's people you can talk to. That woman down at the flea market, so sorry. I talked to her for many years. I said, how are you doing with cigarettes? She said, I'm doing better. She said, by the way, she said, I went and uh, she said, I read that film of, of uh, Left Behind. And she said, I want my husband to watch that. And she <laughs> said, uh, uh, he's not a Christian. He don't really believe in God, but he, he believes something's there. But he's a drunkard. <coughs> And she said, I told him that he needs to watch it and ask the Lord to forgive him because if the rapture takes place, me and his daughter, the girl, we're going to heaven and you're going to be left behind. I said, it's not true. Mm -hmm. She said, what? I said, it's not true. Mm -hmm. I said, you're going to hell with him. What? Mm -hmm. How do you go to church? Well, I can't go to church because i got to work. So she wants to get, get him to watch this and say, God, forgive me. But faith without works is dead. And she's standing there puffing away. Come on. Doing? Still smoking. Right. But they're Christians. They're Christian. And they'll tell you, I love Jesus. How many know? Sometimes you just have to say, you're going to hell too? Mm -hmm. Why? How can you say it? Because the Bible says so. Mm -hmm. You're neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. Come on. Mm -hmm. So just because that man says, God forgive me, I don't want to go to hell, I want to go to heaven, does that put him in heaven? Mm -hmm. no. What does repentance mean? Turning from your wicked ways and turning to Christ. Say so what, Brother Michael? Turn from your wicked ways and turn to Christ. Well, if I'm going north, repentance means I'm, then I'm going what? South. <laughs> if I was doing this here, I'm going to stop doing this and start doing... Come on. Yeah. So, say, man. Turn around. Yeah. so people have got so much mixed up that I tell you what, it's hard to talk to people. Sister Annabelle, isn't it hard to talk to people? Mm -hmm. And man and woman standing there talking with her and all these old side about Jesus and all this stuff, but they don't go to church. 
and I, where they live, down Lancaster, so we like that. I told him, come here. Well, we'll see. I said, what you just said is you're not coming. How many of people would find every truth? The other woman said to me, she, she doesn't go to church because she can't find a church that preaches the full word of God. And you know who she is, uh, Kyle Forbes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so excited. Oh, so, oh was, but there's nobody preaching. I said, you know, for all these years. Yeah. Let's come down here. What about you? Yeah. She said, uh, said to her daughter, her daughter's really in sad shape. So, you want to go to Bible study? You want to go to church time? Yeah, yeah. I said, sister Carol, if you don't come, the next time I see you, I'm going to just go, liar! You want to do that? I said, oh, I would do that. She said, would you always smile? I said, no, I'm not going to smile. How do you know? Talk is sheep. Mm -hmm. Action speaks louder. That's right. That's right. Faith without works is it. So she could tell everybody the reason she don't go to church. I said, the thing is, I said, you've got to be in church. Well, I'm not getting anything. Well, maybe you're not getting anything. Because you're not in but, a great place. <laughs> but go, at least go someplace. Yeah. I mean, if they read one verse out of the Bible for God so loved the world, that ought to do something for you. Thinking about when uh, Ananias and Sephora's uh, lied to the Holy Ghost. I mean, mm -hmm. if, they're, if they're trying to, because it says that you're yay, be yay, and you're nay, nay. You know, um, but you see what I'm talking about. Right. She just said yay and nay. Yeah. We're coming. They don't come. No. If you don't take a stand for the Lord, you mm -hmm. just stood against him. No. How many of you want to be this way here? Like God's book? Don't expect to use you greatly if you're not first strong and faithful. How, how many of you, if you would happen to die, God would take you by the way of grave. Whoever had to preach your funeral would say, that person was strong and they were faithful. Or would they have to stand up and tell a lie? Well, I'm sure they're in heaven. Are you really? Are you really? Are you really sure they're in heaven? How do you know? Then you check back on the track record. What kind of a life? Do you know if you go in a hospital and you have trouble with your heart, they have a thing called a heart monitor? Mm -hmm. And you have to they take a chart and read that thing and tell you how your heart is doing. The doctor told me, he said, I, I want a track, a track record of your blood pressure. So every morning, every evening, I take a track record. That tells the doctor how I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So if God takes a track record of our life. Spiritual EKG. Spiritual EKG. Let me say that. Let's go back to this here. Okay. We, we did go across some of it, and we, we had to cut off. We're not going to take a whole lot of time, but uh, start with God. Don't start with verse 1. <coughs> Then said he unto the disciples, What? Where are you at? <laughs> I don't know. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. Oh, I'm sorry. In other words, how many times do I ever have to say this? Stop reading your Bible. Study. What, what are you supposed to do? Study. study it. Stop reading the Bible. Study it. We just read it, and I said, what is it about? And every word, that's why I try to explain every word, every word is so powerful. Now let's go back and see how powerful it really is. Where they turn the heat over, there's the heat over again. Yeah. Whew. Okay. Verse, verse 19. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. Okay. Sister John, why did it say there was a certain rich man? Let me give his name. Didn't give his name. Yeah. They said there was a certain rich man. Does that tell you what his name was? It did not say, uh, what's his name that's running for president now? 
Trump. Trump. Donald Trump. Trump. Brother Michael, tell us the reason why. Well, for one thing, he's saying there's more than one rich man in the world, and and he is. Um, I think by using the word certain, he's also saying not all rich men are the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Let me say something to you. His name was not worthy to be mentioned. That's right, he wasn't worthy. Like, he wasn't worthy. He wasn't Abraham. He wasn't Lazarus. He was just rich. How many of you know, if that's all somebody can say about you is you go to a cemetery and you should say rich man. But who was he? He's not worthy to even mention his name. How many of you know? I'm not being mean against Donald Trump, but Donald Trump is not even worthy for us to mention his name. I know Donald Trump. Right, you think like I thought. Him and I'm like, if he get his head Guess together, what? I told him. Guess what? I'd support Donald Trump. You <coughs> know why I'd support him? To get saved. Whatever I wouldn't get saved, oh, yeah, but, but I, I would support him this way here. Because he's not cutting corners from nobody. He's telling the truth. Right. He said, I'm That's not right. in it for money. I'm telling you, Donald Trump is telling you, he's talking about the borders, and we're not going to get all it. He's talking about the borders and all this kind of stuff. He's telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he has a rude way of saying it and doing it. But at least I gave him one thing. At least he's speaking up. But the point is this here. He did not say the rich man's name because the rich man was not important. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen. The purple represents royalty. And fine linen. And fair sumptuously every day. He had the best of the best. In other words, there wasn't nothing he was lacking. Yeah. But even though he was so rich and had all this kind of stuff, the Lord still leaves him nameless. Wow. Anybody see that? Yeah. How many of you know, he don't care how much money we have, we better have him. So let's say amen. Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 7, it says the first verse, A good name is better than precious ointment, mm -hmm. and the day of death than the day of one's birth. I just thought it was interesting that it has about the day of death with a good name, because I don't, I don't believe, since he was in hell too, that the Lord wanted uh, people to know his name either. So, yeah. so, so we say that. How many know our name is, is not a name that God loves? Unless we love him. Mm -hmm. Brother um, and you know the story of the ten virgins, uh, you know the five uh, foolish ones were knocking on the door.